Happy New Year. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, on behalf of me, on behalf of my family, on behalf of our spiritual family of World Christian Fellowship uh, spread all over the world, I greet one and of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a warm and a wonderful New Year ahead. I know we are used to receive a New Year promise every year. So this year, we are not going to call it as a promise. We are going to call that as a focus. A verse which will be focused so that we can focus our energy and our call upon following the Lord Jesus Christ on one direction. Uh, this year, we have taken a theme from Mark chapter 4, verse 14. The sower sows the word. Because many times when we read, the sower sows the seed. But whereas it is not the seed, it is the word. Sower sows the word. Uh, we call this 2019. You know, if you are watching online, you can see it uh, underneath. You will find this. Uh, you can download it and you can print it and you can put it on as a bookmark in your Bible and you can write all the prayer requests on the back of it whatever the people or whom you are going to pray for and what you are going to pray for this year this 2019 you can write it underneath and behind so that you can use it uh, this is under the screen you can find it you know the kingdom is in the word of god the kingdom of god is the jesus what proclaimed in Matthew chapter 13 verse 11 it says, He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you, know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given to them. When the disciples came and asked Jesus, Jesus, why are you speaking in parables? Then Jesus answered them and said, It has been given to you the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. So what do we do? The word of God, which has the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, is being given to you and me by our Lord Jesus Christ. So what do we do? What kind of a word the Lord has given us? The word is, has the power. It has the potential power for everything. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says very clearly, all the scriptures are are breathed or inspired by God. The Bible is nothing but the instruction from God to us. This word, as we all know, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was word, the word was with God, the word was God. That word is alive and it's living and it is powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing your soul and spirit. So in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 that's what it says. So the word has the power, the word is uh, it's a breath of God, uh, the breath of God what has been given to us and not only that, that word is a living, it's alive and it is powerful. That word has been given to you and me. In Isaiah 55 verse 10 and 11 which is a very familiar passage which we all know. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it bring forth and bird that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes from forth my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what it I please and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. Here God says how the rain and the snow comes down from heaven and it does not return back. It yields its fruit and it gives the strength and it gives the nourishment to the plant and it produces same way the word what has been released from my mouth it will not come back empty. It will accomplish its purposes and then it, it will fulfill my purpose. Such a powerful word is given. In Jeremiah 23 verse 29 it says, My word is like a fire. 
And this word is just not empty words. It is a life giving, a spirit. And in John 6, 63 says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So, in effect, what we understand is the word of God is from God and it represents God and it is powerful and it is alive and it is also accomplish its purposes and it is full of fire. Not only that, it gives you life. It is a spirit and life. That word not only does it, what that word has done is it has given you the life the born again life to us through the word of God. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 it says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. My dear brothers and sisters, we are born again through the word of God. That word is being given to us. That's why, you know, in Matthew 30, 11, I said, it has been given to you. My brothers and sisters, those who are watching me, that word, the living word, the powerful word, the fire of God. And not only that, it gives you life. It can make you be born again. That word is given to us. That's why when the parable of the sower, when Jesus spoke, the sower went out and sows the word. That word is what we see such a powerful, such an awesome word. And that word is given to us. And Jesus commanded us in the Great Commission. In Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20, he says, Go into, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of age. Amen. So, we have been commanded by God to go and teach and preach the word. Many times, as you are watching me, many times you don't go and show the word because you are scared. Either you are scared, they will not receive it or they ask, you are scared that you may break the relationship. But I want to tell you, it is better to obey God than to do anything else. Because he has commanded us to go and preach the gospel. He commanded us that I have given you that spirit. That spirit is in you. That spirit of God uh, abides in you. As John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, and you shall ask what you desire, and it shall be done to you. So that word, you abiding in you. So when the word abides in you, the word lives inside of you, then you will be able to produce the fruits, what God has commanded us to do. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's what Matthew 12, 34 says. So my dear brothers and sisters, that word lives inside of you. That word is with you. So what you should do? You should meditate that word. You should have the word enriched in you. Uh, you know, as Colossians 3, 16 says, let the word of Christ richly dwells in you. In the Old Testament, in Psalm 1 verse 2 says, Blessed is a man who meditates the word of God or the law of God day and night. So you soak yourself in that word of God so that your heart is filled, your abundance of the word. Then when you speak that word, then that word will change somebody's destiny. My dear brothers and sisters, the power of God is, resides in you in the word of God. And when you release that word, that can change the destiny of a person. I can tell you scores of example, the people who traveled with me, the people who sat next to me, they have found God because I was able to speak them the word of God. One word, 
I remember one incident. I went to preach, uh, I went to pray for someone who was held, holding a very high position in a company. And the God gave only one word. What legacy? The word legacy. After three years, I had a chance to meet with him. And he said, I still remember that word. One word God spoke through you. Legacy. I know what it means. My brothers and sisters, that word lives inside of you. What is the difference between reading a Bible and any other book? When you read Bible, the author is with you. The author who wrote the Bible, who teaches you. The anointing which is upon you, as 1 John 2.27 says, the anointing which is upon you will teach you all things. So my brothers and sisters, you soak yourself, you meditate and you memorize and you soak yourself fully in the word of God. Let your heart be filled with the word of God. Out of the abundance you start speaking. When you speak, that will change the destiny. It doesn't matter when you throw the seeds. You see that you study the parable of the sower. He sows the seed. It falls on every ground. But when it falls on a good ground, it produces good yield of fruits. There are many people don't do. Why? Because they are scared of something. What if they don't accept it? What if they reject it? doesn't matter. Your responsibility and my responsibility is just sow the seed. Just sow the word. So my, my brothers and sisters, in this year, 2019, will you take this as a challenge to sow the word of God? How in the world that you will be able to enjoy heaven when your loved ones is not being saved? You know, sometime back, a few years back, we did a Cornelius challenge in our church. What did Cornelius do? When God told, the angel appeared and told him, call for Peter. When they went and called Peter, he called all the relatives. He made them assemble. And then when, the, when Peter came and he spoke, every one of them received the Holy Spirit. And they all baptized and they found in the kingdom of God. So my brothers and sisters, in this year, 2019, will you write down the names of the people whom God puts in your heart and pray earnestly for them. And not only prayer, a prayer with an action that you will sow the word. There are many ways you can sow the word. There are many teachings what we have given. You can learn from them and you be a good sower so that God, when you stand before God, God will be able to say, well done, good and faithful. So my dear brothers and sisters, will you take a focus this year, 2019? I will sow the word of God. Wherever it may be, it may be your working place, it may be your business place, it may be your traveling, it may be your um, uh, leisure activity, your sports, your, your gym, or your <coughs> whatever the place, wherever you are, will you be a sower of a word? May God grant you that wisdom. May God grant you that favor so that let this year focus be. You will be a sower of the word of God. The powerful, a living, a fire and that will change the destiny. It is in your mouth now. Will you do it? Let me pray for you. Gracious Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every one of them. They will be a good sower of the word of God. And this 2019, let them have this focus that they will show your word to the near one and dear ones and anyone who comes across the path in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, honor and praises. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful year. And in this 2019, let you, each and every one of you will be able to give a testimony that how you were able to sow the word of God in everybody's life. Amen. God bless you.